We're going to go through every single FPS fix for Hogwarts Legacy currently, and there are an extreme amount already. What's up, world? It's Trooper back in another video, and today we're checking out Hogwarts Legacy FPS fixes, and I'm going to go through every single fix currently available, and we're going to start off with some of the smaller ones, and then we're going to work our way up to one of the like more advanced stuff, but also just stuff that can really, really change the way that your game acts or behaves. So first off, we'll just start off with some of the basic stuff. Now, first up, we're going to do the DLSS update. And this applies to all NVIDIA cards that are 2000 or series or newer. Again, this whole video is not for just 2000 series or newer or even NVIDIA. This first fix is, so we're just going to get over with it because this one does really help a ton. And this is actually the most like beneficial performance increase that, I, that I've had. And it can be proven because it's a DLSS update. So... You're going to want to navigate over to your Hogwarts Legacy directory, and the best way to do so, or the easiest way, is to go to Steam, hit Properties on the game, and then go to Local Files. Once you get to Local Files, you hit Browse Directory, it will take you right here, right to our page. And so the first thing you're going to want to do is you want to come to Engine, and then Content, uh, no, Plugins, sorry, Plugins, uh, Runtime, NVIDIA, DLSS, Binaries, Third Party, Win64, and then here is your DLS file. Now I'm going to have a download link in the description for the DLL file. All you're doing is essentially replacing this file. Here's exactly what the zip will look like. Let's get us back into the folder here. This is exactly what the zip will look like. All you're going to do is drag over the DLSS file into here and replace the file. And since I've already done it, I'm not going to redo it. But you can even highlight over it and see that it says, should say at least, Come on now. There you go. File version 2.5.1.0. So you can even see that the version here is 2.5.1. And I believe the one that was here earlier was 2.3. So with that out of the way, we'll come back to the directory. And honestly, I don't know if you need to do this. But this is just in case. If you wanted to, the EXE is right here. So you might as well come to Properties. Compatibility. And you could click Run or Disable full screen optimizations however this uses dx12 so you shouldn't need to do this and i don't do this in general hey this might help or fix your problems so this is some this is a solution so if it does or if you are still experiencing frame rate issues even after all these fixes i do recommend trying this option and if not take it off and so with the directory open again what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to come up here and we're going to want to hit copy so copy this exactly of where your game is located because for our next step that we're going to do we need this exact location so hit copy and we're going to come out to our windows search bar and we're going to type in c either cfg which will bring up hopefully this or type in exploit protection once you get the exploit protection we're going to open this up and then we're going to come over to program settings now this is really good for ram Hogwarts Legacy has a problem with RAM in general, so this is actually a pretty decent fix. I have it applied, but what you'll want to do is you'll come here, you'll hit Add Program, you'll hit Choose Exact File Path, then mine is already set to the exact Hogwarts Legacy page, but what you'll do is you'll hit this, and you'll paste here, and then hit Enter, and it should take you to the directory. So if I just go to a random section, and then hit Paste... It'll take me right to the directory. Then we're going to click on this. We're going to hit open. It's going to put it here. Once it puts it in here, we're going to click this button, this little drop-down arrow. We're going to hit edit. We're going to scroll all the way down to CFG, control flow, go, flow guard, not glow. And we're going to hit this button here, override system settings, and we're going to click off. Now we're going to hit apply, and then that should be set to go. Now I'm going to have this exact syntax down below, basically just a little combo that you can type into your bottom search bar and it should be the exact location of your engine files and if it's not I try to do my best to answer some questions so leave a comment down below if it isn't but basically copy paste this from my description it's just gonna be percent local app data hogwarts legacy saved config windows no editor and engine file once this is open this is going to just be like a little notepad now this is our big big edit here this is for all gpus this is going to help everybody I believe, at least. Now these two, this section right here, will not be here. You'll just have this. The rest won't be there. So this little system setting part, what you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna add in system settings like this. Now I'm gonna have this little stuff down below copy pasted to you. 
And this one right here essentially increases your streaming pool. So if you have a 8 gigabyte GPU, you're going to want to use 3072. Basically, this is referring to megabytes. And this will increase your streaming pool to essentially allow a lot more flow into the GPU and allow more render of the frames. And we'll increase your pool size there because I think the default is a thousand. It's like Minecraft, basically. You're like you're increasing your VRAM for it. Not the RAM, but you're increasing your VRAM for it. And then this one here is going to allow your CPU to take over more of the GPU rendering stuff. And essentially, a lot of times, I think besides Hogsmeade, I'm at around 98% on my GPU. So this is going to allow the CPU to work on some of the upscaling stuff that DLSS is using and a few other tactics. So this is another really, really good one that you should put there. Now, the, there is a few others that you can put here. I don't recommend doing them because they add latency or they take away latency and then decrease performance or they make frame render times different or they add, they take away a frame render. I just don't like that type of stuff. I just want to let the system do what it's going to do but i'm going to include the rest of the fixes that you can have here all you're going to have to do after that after adding those is click file and hit save or control s and you can go ahead and close that and it's all set to go i'm going to go ahead and show you the other syntax that you can add that i do not recommend adding but you can if none of this fixes it and you can try it okay so here is the rest of what you can do and you really don't need these spaces but this is just where i copied it from again i'm gonna link the reddit post down below that kind of showcases all this stuff but i'm going to go through each of them and again, we already went through this one, CPU stuff. This one, I believe, is adding a synchronous time to the GPU frame render. And then this one is adding, like, a frame lag. Like I said, that's adding one frame behind. And then this one is finishing the frame. Again, like, these three settings, I believe, add a lot of latency here. Or can take away latency and then add performance issues. This texture streaming to one is going to enable texture streaming. Negative one will disable it. One will keep it enabled. We don't need to enable this. We already have texture streaming because the streaming pool size is set to 3072. And the limit pool size to one here. This is if you have like a, a GPU that is very limited in your VRAM size. And I do want to mention really quickly with the pool size that if you don't have an eight gigabyte card, if you only have a six gigabyte, I would recommend setting this to 2048. If you have anything less than a 6 gigabit card, you should put this to 1,700 or 1,700. And then if you have above an 8 gigabyte card, set this to 4,096. So if you have a 12 gigabyte card or the 16 gigabyte cards, you can set this a little bit higher. So that's just, just for that. These here, again, if you have limited VRAM, maybe if you have a 3 gigabyte card, you can probably set this and leave this here. This will probably help you a little bit. Same with these options. And then these down below, I'm not exactly sure 100% on what they do. However, I'm not going to leave them here because these are doing, again, these have a little bit of latency things with them, I believe. So people are talking about this can add some latency. So I'm going to take these out. I'm not going to use that. I'm not going to use this. I'm not going to use this or any of these. Just these two should help out a ton because of what they do. And this should be your biggest fix here. And again, we're going to go ahead and once you're done setting these up, go ahead and hit save. And again, just in case you want to know, 8 equals 3072. If you get 6, you should do 2048. If you have below 6, so anything under 6 gigabytes of VRAM, you should set it to 1700. And if you have a 8 gigabyte plus card, so 12 gigabytes use it to 4096 or more again we're gonna take that out because we don't need that and we've already saved actually we'll just resave just in case we'll leave the rest of this you don't want to mess it up and go ahead and close that now i wanted to go over some in-game settings very 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 briefly because some of this stuff people are asking me what my settings were so i just want to scroll through all of them however i also do recommend some of these setting down like fog level, there is a ton of fog when flying around. Setting it to medium will really, really help your GPU performance. Uh, things like post-processing, you could set this down to low or even leave it at high. This always impacts PC performance or GPU performance in basically like every title. Post-processing has been a, a culprit for it and it doesn't really add or benefit you at all. 
Now the shadow quality, I would recommend leaving it at least medium. I noticed that medium to low didn't really increase performance and high definitely decreased performance a little bit. But there was not much difference in the shadows, so I would leave this at medium. The rest you can leave it high. I would always recommend trying to play at high texture resolution. Again, high to ultra isn't much different. Uh, there just really isn't unless you're playing at 4K. And if you're playing at 4K, you're probably playing only at 60 FPS, which I don't recommend either. But 1440p is usually the sweet spot. So texture at high is definitely recommended. You can put everything else to low. Just put textures to high. You want to keep your textures good. As long as you have the VRAM for at least six. So that should be the settings that you should do. Now there is one more that someone recommended to do, and that is the camera acceleration. I told me to set this to zero. However, if you're on mouse and keyboard, camera acceleration should not affect you. But I'm just going to do it, just in case. And also, aiming acceleration is at the zero. Now, I've noticed that these two do not affect my mouse and keyboard at all. But I'm just going to do it in case it helps fix stuttering. And this will also help fix your stuttering if you're on controller, especially. Well, at least it will fix the acceleration stutters that are caused by these two settings. And I don't recommend using these settings irregardless. These are probably some of the worst settings you can ever have enabled is camera acceleration. Basically, it means like when you hold your joystick and you push it all the way to the left or the right, when you push it all the way over, it slowly gains speed. So it's like a car. It slowly accelerates. Instead of it just going max speed as soon as you hit the right of the joystick, it takes a while to build up. It's literally the worst setting ever. I've never heard of anybody using this, like, legitimately. So, or just wanting to use it. You know, it's people like to use inverted camera controls, okay? Like, it's very, very uncommon. And that should be about it. Everything else is, is pretty good. As far as settings-wise, I don't really see anything else crazy that you could add. But that should about cover for this video. I hope I went over literally everything that is available at this point and just try to fix your system as much as possible. And if you enjoyed the video, I'd like to like and subscribe. And until the next one, deuces.